All right, we are here with Carrie Moss, the Executive Director of the ACLU of Michigan. Carrie, how are you doing? I'm great. Hi, Happy Frog. <laughs> uh, give us an update. What's new with uh, the ACLU? Well, there's always a lot happening. Um, if you ever want to hear more, go to our website, aclumich.org, to get cutting edge news. Uh, but let's see. In the last month, uh, we had a really big victory in the Sixth Circuit, the Court of Appeals, who agreed with us that the state ban on affirmative action is unconstitutional. And that was a huge victory. We had worked really hard to oppose that ballot initiative back when it passed in, I think it was 2007. And um, we immediately filed a lawsuit claiming it was unconstitutional uh, with a coalition of groups, including the NAACP and many others, and finally worked our way up to the, the Sixth Circuit and, and won last week. And it was a hard fought battle. Uh, and one that we think is really going to be important to the state and to the ability of um, African American kids and Latino Americans and others to uh, go to any university that they want. Great. What else are you working on? Well, we're really trying to respond to the financial crisis and the way it's impacting poor people. Um, there are a lot of unintended consequences of the budget problems. For example, we see more and more people getting put in jail when they can't pay fines or fees. And so we have been representing a number of people and are looking to file a bigger lawsuit that challenges the idea that you can put people in jail because they're poor. I thought we'd gotten rid of debtor prisons. Uh, no. Um, in the effort to raise funds, a lot of cities and counties are increasing their fines and fees, and the courts are imposing them because that's how they raise their budgets. So I'll give you one example. We represented a woman whose son was put in a juvenile detention facility because um, he got into trouble. She was sent a bill. She was homeless, and when she couldn't pay it, they put her in jail um, and then let her out on work release where she earned $150. She brought that money back to pay for her son's costs, and they instead charged her for the cost of putting her in jail. What city was this? Um, it was up north. I don't remember exactly where it was, but that's just one example, and we've been involved in about a dozen cases at this point. ACLU of Michigan has opened uh, a branch office now in the Grand Rapids area. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, update folks about how that expansion is going? Uh, we're really happy to announce this past year that we opened an office in Grand Rapids. And one of one of the reasons that we did it is we are the only civil rights group in the state that has a full-time lobbyist in Lansing. And so we are the civil rights voice most often heard by legislators. The real political power in the state, though, is generally held by legislators from the western part of the state. So we knew that we only could make a real difference if we were there visible, developing relationships in a much more deliberate and proactive way. So we opened an office. We've been involved already in trying to support a human rights ordinance that includes sexual orientation in Holland, Michigan. We've been very involved in helping children in the Grand Rapids schools whose parents were convicted of felonies at one point or another or even misdemeanors be allowed to volunteer and be present for their children's education. So right away we, we got involved in some really big issues and are looking forward to uh, increasing that work. And what's the response been in the community, uh, the communities on, on uh, the uh, western side of the state to ACLU arriving? We love the western part of the state. People in Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo have been wonderful. We've always been present there. We've always done some work. But it's different when you're there every single day. Mm -hmm. And we've really tried to listen carefully and hear what issues are most important to people locally. Racial profiling, particularly for the migrant community, um, LGBT rights. Uh, education reform, these are the women's rights, these are the issues that we hear most and mo most often that people want us to work on. Great. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thanks. Bye.